Hello everyone and you're welcome. Now in this lesson, we're going to create our vortex shader. But before we do that, I just quickly want to show you the twirl node from the cartoon water graph, which we created. Now I uh, promised in that graph that we're going to come back to the uh, twirl node because it creates an interesting effect. So right now I have this property called the twirl strand. I'm just going to drag that called twirl strand. And if we go ahead into twirl strand and where it sets default 0.9, let's use a value of say eight and we can actually see this effect we can even see it from the Voronoi and we can also see the effect on the main preview so this gives us a kind of like wind effect and this is what we're clearly going to use as our vortex right so just to put that in mind and with that let's go ahead and just start working on that what I'm going to do is just set our twirl strength back to 0.9 save our asset and let's close our uh, cartoon water graph Let's just close that and let's just close it and close that tab. Nice. So in our scene, let's just go ahead and turn off our cube and also turn on our water. I'll just call that water. I'll just call that uh, water just like that. And what we're going to do is to create a new, uh, let's create a new plane and then we are going to add a shader to that plane. So let's just go ahead and save our project and let's create a new game object. I'm just gonna go to game object, uh, 3D object, and let's just say a plane. Just like that, so we can have this plane in the scene. So now that we have that plane, let's just go ahead and call that plane our uh, vortex, because this is what we're going to apply the vortex on. So right now in our graphs, let's just right click and go to create from our projects tab and go to shader and then create a uh, PBR graph and let's just call that uh, vortex just like that. So now that we have that vortex, let's go ahead and just click that. And before we open in shader, I'll just want to drag this and set it as a child of the uh, props. So now that we have that as a child of the props, let's go ahead and open our vortex. So now I have our vortex and I'll click on open shader. So the first thing we're going to do right now is just to create our twirl node. So let's maximize our view and let's get rid of the uh, main preview for now I'll just turn this to a plane because I like uh, using a uh, quad for that so nice so we have a nice quad and we have our PBR master so let's get rid of the blackboard because we're not going to use the blackboard right now so the first thing we're going to do is to actually uh, create our uh, our twirl node so let's just go ahead into the scene and just go to twirl and we have that twirl right now so what we're going to do is to be able to uh, automatically control that twirl and we can simply do that by uh, using a uh, time node because i think a time node would be an excellent uh, option to uh, use a value to control that uh, twirl so uh, to see that effect just like we did with the carbon shader let's go ahead and create a voronoi noise voronoi and then we'll pass the output into the uh, UV input of our Voronoi and clearly we can actually see that effect. And that's awesome. So we can drag the strand, uh, we can just drag that strand just to see, you know, uh, the kind of effect we have, which is great. So let's have the ability to ch uh, change that. So let's go to our blackboard, let's create a vector one and let's call that our vortex strength just like that and let's set a default value of let's say five like that and we'll drag our vortex strength outside and we'll set that uh, input right here and we can see that uh, value so let's try something like uh, eight right so we don't just get really uh really crazy uh with it so if you want to like see that uh, directly in our screen, we can just go ahead and go to our albedo and just get the output and set that output to our albedo. And we can just see that in our albedo. Well, this is one-sided, so we can go ahead and click the setting icon and then click on two-sided so we can actually see the effect in case we actually uh, spin it from the uh, back. So this is, uh, is kind of cool. All right. So let's go to file and click on save. 
So now what we're going to do next is to be able to control the uh, movement of this uh, vortex so that it actually can you know spin about an axis so what we're going to do if we go to the offset and we drag the offset either left or right we can actually see that this is actually uh, animating so what we're going to do is to use a value and then we're going to animate that uh, value so to do so let's go ahead and create a time node and then we'll drag that time node and set that time node into the offset just to test it. Now this is actually spinning, which is actually good for our vortex effect, but we want to be able to control our time because this right now is going through our uh, frame rate. So uh, what we're going to do is to actually create a multiply node and multiply it by a fractional value so we can cut down the uh, speed. So to do that, uh, let's go ahead and create our multiply node. So first, let's create a uh, multiply right here. So let's go grab our space bar to create our node. And let's go ahead and look for multiply. So now that we have multiply, we're going to set the time output into B. And we're also going to create a vector one. And then we'll call that uh, vortex speed. So let's go ahead and create a vector one. Let's call that vortex underscore speed now let's give it a uh, default value uh, let's set this to uh, 6 just to test out I'm just winging these values so I'm just bringing them out from the fly and I'll just assign them here and now we can take the output of our multiplier and provide that into our uh, twirl input so this is way too fast. So what we're going to do is to use a uh, fractional value of say 0 0.5. And I can actually go down to 0 0.1. And I kind of like that, uh, you know, that cool and soft uh, vortex uh, effect right there. I kind of like that vortex effect. And also for our strength, we can set it to a smaller value or we can set it to a higher value so we can see more uh, deficiency so let's say if we set it to a value of 50 this is going to look like you know a uh, spinning kind of like a disc thingy which is kind of awesome you can even use this effect for a uh, disc but i just want to use it for a um, for a vortex effect so i'll just set this to a value of uh, let's settle at 10. nice so now we have this effect and uh, it's looking kind of great but I, I believe we can improve on this effect First way we can improve this is to add a simple color. Another way is to apply some certain uh, transparency to this. So I'll just go back to our master node. And our master node is hiding. Just get rid of the uh, main preview and the blackboard. Uh, sorry about that guys, I actually uh, <laughs> kind of hit these and I was kind of confused for a second where it went. So if we click on our master node, we can change our material from opaque and set it to transparent so we can actually get back to the main preview and see that effect we're going to see this more apparently when we um have this to uh when we set a material and create this material so the first thing we're going to do to actually improve this is to apply a uh, texture mask so we can actually filter out some parts of our effect so we can actually see that uh, live in action so uh, let's go ahead and create the mask so let's go ahead and uh create a texture texture 2d asset and then we create our sample texture our sample texture 2d and we can drag in our uh, asset right there which is awesome now in earlier versions of shader graph like the version i'm using once you create your sample texture it comes attached with a 2d asset so you might not necessarily have to use this step so what we're going to look for is a sort of black and white uh, gradient. Let's see, uh, just something. Okay, let's let's take this one because this one comes with uh, Unity already. And what we're going to do is to add that to uh, using an add node. So we're going to take the output of our, uh, our Vernoy and we're going to add that with the uh, multiply node. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take this output and combine that with our texture. 
So I'll just drag the RGBA output of our sample text 2 node. And I'm just going to create an add node. And next, I'm going to drag the output of the Voronoi and just combine that. And we can see that uh, effect right there. I think add is the wrong node to use. I'm not getting the effect I want with the add node. Let's try a uh, multiply node. So I'll just drag the output of our sample text to. I'm going to try the multiply. And I'll take the uh, output of the P node. Exactly. So this is the effect I uh, kind of want. I kind of prefer this uh, effect because it's much more uh, neater. So great. So we have this uh, alpha that is actually masking out. So this is basically a texture and it's masking out this section based on the uh, multiply uh, node. So which is a uh, which is great. So what we want to preview this. Let's just go ahead and click this drop down and we can drag this to our emission and just pass it in like that. And also remember the alpha controls the opacity like we saw in our um, we saw when we were creating our uh, dissolve material texture. So let's go ahead and drag that into the alpha also. And just like that, you can see we have this uh, nice kind of wind uh, effect that looks like it has a dragon in it. So uh, in our next lesson, we'll just simply see how we can go ahead and tweak this um, vortex node. And let's go ahead and continue moving on.